Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling and I thank you once again for tuning in. This one's another cassette episode. I uh, love going through my cassettes. I know we get a lot of cassette collectors out there. This one is on one of my favorite bands, uh, the band that started this show off and the band that gave it its name, Kansas. Uh, of course, one of their albums is Vinyl Confessions, if you didn't know. So this one's going through my Kansas cassette collection, which I believe is pretty complete. Um, from the first album all the way through to the mid-90s. So we'll get started on my Kansas cassette collection. This is the first Kansas album from 1974. They're on Kirshner Records, which was distributed by CBS. This is a typical looking U.S. CBS cassette. Black on the side instead of red, which is a little bit unusual. That's the Kirshner logo there. This actually a, it makes a K. And there's the song titles. I believe that they're in order. They weren't always in order when they printed them on there. And that's what the cassette itself looked like, a usual CBS cassette from the time period. And instead of credits inside here, it has other uh, cassettes that were available. And um, some of these go to the late 70s, which tells me this is a, a reissue, a somewhat newer reissue. Second one is um, one that's actually not opened. It's the second Kansas album, Song for America, from 1975. Now, unlike the record CD, it actually doesn't have their logo on it. They just they kind of took some liberties in the record companies uh, putting the song titles on there, uh, putting the, the cover together. Like, they didn't use the actual Kansas logo. And like I mentioned, song titles, not all of the songs are listed. They would do sometimes on these this era of uh, issues of cassettes. They would have some of the song titles. This is a little bit faded on the side, probably sat in the sun maybe in a store, and um, there's the songs on it. Now ironically, the, they would put five song titles on these run of cassettes. There's only six songs on this album altogether, they're long songs, and the only one not listed is the title song, Song for America. Next one is the third Kansas album, which also came out in 1975, Mask. Quite dark on the cover art there. Uh, I've seen it on my vinyl episode. It's actually a, a, a figure made up entirely of sea light. And this one too has five uh, song titles listed. And again, the logo wasn't used on this album, but it never was. This is the same thing that was on the cassette and CD. Somebody named uh, the initials RB on this was nice enough to put their initials on it. There are your song titles. And this also has cassettes listed, and again, uh, I see like Heart Little Queen on here. So this goes up into the late 70s too, so it is probably a reissue of some sort. The next one I'm going to show you is a little bit of a curiosity. You can usually tell from looking at a, any kind of music, whatever medium it's on, uh, where it comes from. But I, this one here eludes me. There is no country of origin listed. Of course, it's Left Overture, the first big Kansas album with Carry On Wayward Son. That's actually, no, it is listed on there. It's just not the first song. 1976. Now, you can tell it's a CBS issue tape. It looks right. Uh, it's got the actual CBS logo there rather than the Kirshner logo. Song titles printed a little tiny bit differently. The cassette here is where it really starts to look different. It's got a sticker on it. And, um, no country of origin listed. The Anytime Sound from CBS. And they've got some other artists listed here that were on the CBS label. So nowhere on here does it say where this came from. Now, Discogs. I've mentioned Discogs many times. I know a lot of you out there have your collections on Discogs. I uh, did an entry for that because there was no other cassette listed with this particular um, serial number which does not match the North American serial number at all. And the only other one I could find was a vinyl that had the number 4908 from New Zealand. So I'm guessing this cassette's from New Zealand. I certainly didn't get it from there. But that's, that's only a guess. I can't really tell. Uh, next few are some Canadian issues, and Canadian CBS cassettes from the 70s look very distinctive. This is Point of No Return, 77. And this is an old Canadian issue. this yellowish look and it's not like the cream color beige colored cassette there's actually a sticker on this one quite clearly states a product of CBS Records Canada 
nothing in it on the inside, no credits whatsoever inside the J card. Next one's got an interesting bit of printing on it. It's the 1978 live album two for the show. They've got this like fancy handwriting, uh, writing of Kansas. Double tape value. And also on the side, it's very different. I've never seen one like this before. Other than that, it just looks like your typical CBS cassette. And again, it's got the sticker on it, like point of no return, and nothing else inside the J card. Next one is another unopened cassette. This is a Canadian version of Monolith from 1979. It has probably a $4.99 price tag written on there in orange. And this is a Canadian cassette that's got the actual Kansas logo on the side, some personalization going on. Um, I guess the other ones were personalized as well, but this one's actually proper. And I'm guessing that there's nothing inside the J card. One of my absolute favorite Kansas albums, Audio Visions from 1980. This, of course, you can tell by looking at it, is a Canadian issue. nothing in the J card and that's what the cassette looks like again with the actual Kansas logo on it. Next up the namesake of the show Vinyl Confessions. This is a US cassette couldn't find a Canadian copy of that it wasn't really particular where they came from but don't like the logo they used on there they should have used the actual logo and other than that looks like a typical CBS cassette from the time period Nothing in the J card, and just a little bit of info there on the side as far as who produced it. Next Kansas album, 1983, Drastic Measures. This too is a Canadian issue. You don't see this one all that much, especially not in a Canadian issue. So there it is. Same logo on the side they used for Audio Visions for some reason. And CBS Associated Records, not on Kirshner at this point. And there's the CBS em embedded inset into the cassette shell. Nothing in the J card, and there's what the cassette looks like. The next one, 1984, The Best of Kansas. This is obviously a newer issue, slightly newer issue, a Canadian issue of it. The nice price sticker on there. Right price, I guess. CBS Associated Records again. They were not using Kirshner at this point. Newer issue, you can tell. It's not a... It doesn't end here. The J card goes down all the way. There's the cassette itself. And a little bit of credits. Songwriting credits and I guess the copyright years. Uh, it doesn't say the album that the original songs came from, though. So there was a label switch at this point. Kansas signed with MCA Records and put out another one of my favorite albums of theirs. This is Power from 1986 on MCA Records. This is a Canadian issue on uh, Columbia House. As you can see, they changed. They just added the... Uh, you see where the brackets are. That marks it as a Columbia House, and so does this down here. Other than that, it looks the same as a uh, retail MCA cassette would have looked. The cassette itself looks different because it's Columbia House. It looks more like a CBS issue because Columbia House ultimately was uh, distributed or owned by a division. It was a division of CBS, even though they licensed albums from different labels. And uh, much the same are uh, pictures and credits that are inside the record and CD but no lyrics. This side's completely blank. They could have put the lyrics on here. Uh, Kansas only did two albums for MCA Records, and the next one came out in 1988. Uh, again, not using the logo on this one, in the spirit of things. Uh, it's interesting how on this one, the second S in Kansas is a lowercase. Uh, the band Kansas, the state of Kansas, was named after the Kansa Indian tribe, So, which, to lead to uh, one of their songs, Roughly translates as People of the South Wind. That's the name of one of their songs from the Monolith album. So this is an MCA cassette from the U.S. This is the one Kansas album that was actually produced by the legendary Bob Ezrin. Bit of a concept album, so who better to produce a concept album than Bob Ezrin. And this one has all the lyrics and credits in it that the record CD would have and all, uh, most of the same imagery and all of the credits as well. 
Next thing to come out from Kansas was 1992. Uh, they're an independent band at this point, and they put out the live album Live at the Whiskey. And this is on a label called Intersound. And the only music I have on this Intersound label are a couple of Kansas albums. This is a U.S. cassette from BMG Music Service, or BMG Direct Marketing. So it was mail order. That's what the tape itself looks like. And some credits here, some photos, same as what's in the CD. And as far as I know, the, the, the last Kansas album that is available on cassette came out in 1995. A great album, great original album, called Freaks of Nature, 1995. I really, really like this album a lot. There's the cassette itself. And this has all the lyrics, credits, and photos as well. So yeah, it's not the easiest thing to find all of the Kansas albums on, on cassette, and it's actually kind of hard to find out some of all the CDs and records. So just something I wanted to show you there, my cassette collection of Kansas. Thanks for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.